Hey everybody, back to the off-grid homestead. Um, weather station is still dead. There's no recovery, so I have no idea what it is like outdoors. It was supposed to be 7 degrees last night. It is 53 in the tiny house on wheels, and we had the standby propane heater going. Yes, the standby propane heater was going. I had to clean out the nozzles and the um, the grates and the, the where the burns where the gas comes out and then it was working well. So we kept the house at a cozy 53 degrees downstairs but upstairs is like 75, 80 degrees because heat rises and the standby heater is right by the stairway. You may notice the greenhouse is at 29. That's warm compared to how it was. I'll take you out there later and I'll explain what's going on but uh, yeah, 29 is bad as you know for plants. So We'll do a walk around later on. But this is our first morning back in the tiny house on wheels after our trip to Michigan. So it is, we're going to build up. It's going to take time to heat the house up because the walls and the floor and the insulation and everything in the house needs to be heated. So back to work at the off grid homestead. Here's your baby in a bag. Baby cat, you got a pink bag. It's a girly bag, huh? The fuzzy. There's the baby. She doesn't come out much, but she's exploring because we're emptying packages and boxes and bags. And Felix. Oh, you jealous, Felix? No. Really? Okay. There's the baby. No, they're both talking. Yeah. Hey, Felix. No. Hey, Felix. We are cooking on the wood stove today. I am cooking on the wood stove today. I promised Melanie that I'd cook her a meal in the tiny house on wheels. And today the day has come. It is cold outside, so we got the wood stove cranked up high. And since the house is cold, we needed to crank it up high. And Melanie's helped me to prepare, but for the most part, I'm cooking this meal today on the wood stove. So let's see what we got over here. Uh, we got some groceries today because obviously we were gone and needed to replenish and we got a whole chicken For three and a half dollars a whole chicken now. Yeah, sure We could have gone out to the backyard and got a whole chicken for whatever, but Melanie says no So this was on really good price. So we got some carrots and some potatoes from our own garden which Melanie is preparing and some garlic and onions and uh I'm going to cook this all up in the Dutch oven. Melanie's been waiting for this day. Now I chopped the carrots and Melanie prepared the potatoes from our own garden. Still left over from our own garden. And I should have put in the rice first. We put in some rice. I'm trying to get the vegetables up on top of the rice somewhat. And um, then the rice is going to suck up the juices from the chicken. And it's going to taste amazing. That's going to fluff up. So. Now we're going to prepare some garlic and some spices and get that bird in here. It's going to be nice. Oh, and an onion. It's going to be an amazing meal. Well, there it is, everybody. Uh, Melanie's putting the video on her channel, the bulk of it. So if you want to see me preparing the meal and whatever she's recorded, go on over to Off Grid Homesteading with Melanie and see me cooking a meal for Melanie. So we've got in here potatoes from our own garden and carrots and onions and garlic and then I put in the bird and then I put in the innards that came in the packet we don't waste anything on this uh, property whether we eat it or something else eats it and then we put on some rosemary from our own garden and we got some oregano from our own garden this is fresh and live and growing now and lemongrass from our own garden that's the beauty of it growing for our own food and cooking with our own food so now I'm going to cover that up. I've got rice in there as well, a cup of rice, and I'll probably add some more water later. But for now, the juices of the bird are going to seep out and get into that that um, rice. And that's going to create a nice flavor. By the way, Brian, if you're still watching my videos, that look familiar to you? I want to say thank you again. Well, it's dark and gray and cloudy and no wind. So we've got no power coming in, really. Let's see how the batteries look. Of course, we're not using any power either. Uh, we're not using any power, sorry, I was saying. Um, so we're not using anything, lights, nothing. It's 13 volts, we got 48 watts coming in from the TriStar. 
which is 3.7 amps. And we've got 3.2 amps from the um, Renogy. And we got just under 100 watts coming in on a cloudy gray day. Um, this guy here says 13.22, it's always two tenths higher. And by the way, we haven't shut this one off since the day we hooked it up, so it's been running for about a week non stop. A little over a week. I'm not abandoning the aims, but I'm just running through a test and see what we got going on here for power consumption and capabilities of that. And, uh, you know, see how much it draws long term. And there are two happy goats' butts. That's all you're going to see right now because they're in eating. Um, they're doing pretty well this year. They're they're quite happy and they're doing right. And you can see they got plenty of bedding in there, so they're doing good. We just gave them fresh water and they've got plenty of hay and they get their sweet feed. And the birdies are all happy and good. And there's the one. She's free spirit. I hope she doesn't get hurt because she's always out. But she goes right back in. The chickens do have fresh water and uh, fresh food. Fresh hay, fresh bedding, and they're all alive. And the one turkey, there was a misunderstanding. There's one turkey that it thinks it's a chicken, so it's all happy. It's doing okay. All the birds are good. Hi everybody, Troy and Melanie from the do-it-yourself <laughs> world, and I don't know if you heard the mouse. <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> the off-grid project. Um, we got a box. It was waiting for us when we got home. Guess what I don't have in my hand right now? So this is labeled to, uh, oh it says Melanie and Troy. So the last package said Troy and Melanie and you got to open it. So this yes. one says Melanie and Troy. So who opens it? Melanie. Okay. <laughs> Are you Melanie? Well, if you were Troy the first time, so I gotta be Melanie this time. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we have here. It is a piece of cardboard. We can start a fire. <laughs> I think I know what this is. Somebody had asked me. Let me see here. Didn't waste any time if that's what it is. Ah, yes. Well, thank you. Ooh, DIY uh -huh. wood pellet projects. 35 rustic modern upcycling ideas to personalize your space oh, it's wow. a pallet wood project book uh, thank you very much that was extremely fast it was waiting for us when we got home this is loaded with ideas see there's boxes and storage things and it shows every detail how to make it look the rough pallet wood see how they take yeah there's a um, let me see what is this one? Oh, look at that it's a beautiful table look at how they make Mm -hmm. Using the, the pallet wood framing, and they show from rough to covering it with the wood, mm -hmm. and it looks very nice when it's done. So there's a um, there's a dresser, there's an end oh, table, like the there's, oh that's a neat pattern on pallet wood, that's for this tabletop coffee table. There's um, stackable drawers, I mean there's, here's a uh, bookcase, picture frames, that is cool, barnwood picture frames. How to make picture frames. That is something I've been wanting to do. Anyway. Oh, look at the perfect Instagram picture frame. Oh, if for multiple different pictures. See? Oh, I like that. So, rustic wood clock using slats of pallet wood. There's some really cool stuff in here. It talks a lot about tools. So, Melanie and I will have some really cool ideas here. Shoe organizer. Mm -hmm. And actually, some of this stuff looks really good when it's done. Uh, full length mirror, mirror frame, stuff we can do, rustic wooden crate, which Melanie actually made oh, it one I day. Like yeah, well, you can read this book and make your own. I, we can put huh. the shoes in Feeding there. station, food and oh, water. We can do it for so, this is full of awesome ideas of things we can make out of pallet wood. There's holidays and entertaining, um, tabletop Christmas tree, pallet slat trees, there's all kinds of decorations. Tray Ooh, with mitered wow. corners. That, I like that. That is the type of thing you see in the mm -hmm. um, the stores. I Look like at that. that. That's that's really nice. So there's uh, there's some good ideas. You know, there's oh, a wine. wine rack. Really good ideas here. They talk about how to take apart the the pallets. There's a welcome mat made of pallets. They talk about all kinds of details here. 
I actually browsed part of it online. Uh, she asked if if uh, the person asked if I was interested in this, and I looked online and read a little bit. There's a bench. Really, really good stuff. So thank you. Thank you. I want this fish. The fish? Oh yeah, that's nice too. Well, guys, I needed the whole day, 24 hours, to think about how and what to say here. Um, we entrusted someone to run the wood stove once a day for us in the greenhouse to save the um, plants. We uh, invest a lot of time and money into this, and it worked. It worked. We really had it going, and we have been eating... Regardless of what, what my naysayers say, we've been eating on it here. But um, we had somebody who was supposed to run the wood stove for us occasionally and turn on the propane heater in dire emergencies. We have propane out here as well and turn it off in the day and everything was left to freeze and die. Everything's gone. The peas are dead. The flowers are dead. The herbs are dead. The lettuce is frozen solid and flat. I don't know if you can see, there's nothing left, it's frozen flat. Even the kale and spinach is flattened out and died. All our herbs are flat and dead, everything's dead. All our flowers, we actually kept everything going all winter. So I'm very saddened and frustrated. Uh, and we lost it all. Um, it's all done. And the wood stove wasn't run at all either, so the, the system froze up. And I know it worked because you guys saw daily videos, even on the most brutal cold temperatures outside, even on the worst nights. We went down to 7, 10 degrees outside and I kept this going. So the project was an absolute success. We did it. And I could have kept it going all year, and I would have. But... Uh, it was left to freeze on us, and um, I'm not happy. It's sad. It's all gone. So I'm going to close up the greenhouse for the winter and walk away. There's nothing I can do now anyway. It's this solid ice. It was um, the, the, the soil temperature was 21 degrees last night when we got home. The soil temperature. So... I tell you guys I'm honest, I, um, you know, I show it how it is, I've never hidden anything from y'all, and um, I guess we'll have a good early start in a couple weeks on vegetables. I'll come back out here in mid to late February, and we'll start a garden vegetables, you know, so we'll let it go for a few, about three, four, five weeks, and we'll come back out again and start up again. But, um... It's sad because Melanie was really using the stuff out of here. We had flowers that I had bought her and I kept them alive. All the flowers that I had purchased for her. Even this one, although some of the leaves had dried up, the um, there was life in it. It's all gone. And uh, that was beautiful. So it's all gone. We lost it all. Uh, you take risks when you go on vacation and leave somebody helping. I'm not going to say who. And I'm not going to throw accusations or anything, and I don't want to. If you ask me, I'm not going to answer. This is how it is, all right? So, you know, volunteer, what can you do? Volunteer help? And, um, that is it. So, I'm sad, and, uh, you know, I put a lot into it. It was a success. I know I'm repeating, but I'm sad. Hey everybody, let me see if I can pick that up or not. It has been six hours and we're going to check. Melanie has just um, helped me check and the chicken is cooked through. It's a lot of juice came out of that. I am surprised how much juice came out of that. Really juicy. So we'll be able to add rice to that later and, uh, and have more. But it looks really good. And oh look at that meat. Can you see that guys? Let me see, get my headlamp off. Look at how that is 
That's where we kind of drew to see how well it was cooked. Oh, my mouth is water, Melanie, just looking at it. Mm -hmm. So, let's see how it turned out. I cooked for Melanie today. <laughs> She's been smelling it all day. Says it smells so good. Hey everybody, there, there it is. Um, check out Melanie's channel, Off Grid Homesteading with Melanie, because I cooked it and she recorded me. <laughs> there is your meal, Melanie. Yeah. I hope you're happy. I hope I you will be wait. happy. So, we're going to try it out. Talk to you later, guys. Hey everybody, this is Troy and... Melanie. From the Do-It-Yourself World and... The Off Grid Project. Please subscribe and follow our daily videos as we strive to become self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching.